it is time for you to contact your spiritual guides because they're so real. Um, you have these people who try and give out advice and say, um, you know, this is how you contact your spirit guides. And although not all of the information they pass on as a kind of spiritual movement um, belief is mutually exclusive, a lot of it is. And there's a lot of different people who read from a lot of different books and lots of different uh, ideas about how things work or should work. And I suppose all roads lead to Rome or all of these philosophies might link into something which could be real. Ooh, ooh. But um, the contradictions are problematic. The massive claims can differ. And as a result, some of these claims, some of these ideas can be well, less than ideal. Because if one church says, uh, you know, a Christian spiritualist church says, well, the, the, the biggest guide, the greatest guide, and you know when you're really, uh, you know, connecting the spirit world, when you see this, you're going to see Jesus. Whereas some people who are uh, not Christian, but spiritualist, you know, they're spiritualist or spiritist or whatever the case may be, similar ideas. They're going to say, well, um, you might see this, you might see that. And it, it could vary dramatically. That's why I don't give a specific there. Because some organisations, some churches, some groups, some uh, spiritual centres of whichever kind will claim certain things. So you'll find one spiritualist church in one town where they're always on about Native Americans. You'll find another one where they're always on about archangels. And you might go a bit further afield and find one where they're always on about Buddhist monks. And yeah, you, you could easily go to a whole bunch of different spiritualist churches and find a whole bunch of different things, especially with those ones that are independent and run by, say, one or two people. Say the founder and his wife or the founder and her husband or whatever the case would be. It could be, you know, a founder and her wife, you know, if you want to get, you know, modern. So it could be anything, but they tend to have their themes and their ideas and they tend to go, um, they're seeing the Native American. And the funny thing is they'll say, this is your main guide. This is your main guide. And some of them believe they're seeing the main guide or, the, or the, you know, your kind of guardian angel kind of character um, or whatever the case may be, depends on the type of belief they're passing on because uh, it varies so massively. And you could go to another place where they believe in the same sorts of guides. So once again, it's Native Americans here. Yes, and Native Americans where you were. Yes, that is right. But they give you completely different readings. So it's not like, oh, well, they might not be so accurate with messages, but they're meaningful. But on the guides, they're really good. Well, clearly there's contradiction. Well, those ones mustn't be good because they didn't give me a free cup of tea and a biscuit afterwards. They charged me 25 new pence, gosh darn it, after I paid uh, 50p or a pound in the collection on a Tuesday afternoon. That's no good, is it? So, uh, yeah, it can vary quite a bit. You know, in some groups they charge a lot more, some a lot less, and some people are simply the product of their, well, their education. And a lot of uh, professional uh, mediums have passed through various forms of education. Some have gone to uh, major organisations and uh, you've got the uh, SNU in the UK, uh, Spirit Spiritualist National Union, um, and they basically uh, train people at Stansted Hall and, uh, you know, the Arthur Finlay College, because Arthur Finlay, uh, an author amongst other things, um, he was a massive spiritualist, a bit like a kind of, um, oh, a bit like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in some ways, in terms of his spiritualist beliefs. One of those people who are considered to be the founders of the, the modern spiritualist movement when it kind of kicked in, because you had those people like the Fox sisters, but this is a whole other story, who are considered to be that turning point when it became, oh, sorry, that beginning point. And later on, like, you know, years later, decades later, like say late 19th and early 20th century is where you get the turning point where it begins to become more than uh, bumps and bangs and parlor tricks. It becomes a bit more developed as a belief and you end up with uh, spiritualism and spiritism and various other uh, manifestations of the spiritual movement. But in any case, you could have someone who goes along to the Arthur Finley College 
and they go there for four years to learn to become a medium. They do some of the circuit, practicing amongst others, and they go to all these closed circles and these educational efforts, and they consider themselves to be a medium. They present themselves, and they dress properly for church as well, and uh, yes, they become professional mediums. Alternatively, you could simply buy yourself a diploma online. Or you could go to any number of spiritual centers across the world and someone will say, uh, yes, you have the ability to speak to the spirits. And that'll be 400 pounds, please, and they'll give you a piece of paper and a crystal. And now you can, you know, it, it, it can be just that fickle. It could be that you go to a workshop in Glastonbury. It could be that you go any number of places and you're declared a medium. But uh, needless to say, where you learn your craft where you learn your skills, what you believe in, um, will influence you massively and what you pass on, what you consider to be true. And obviously, as a result, many of these people in different places at different times, uh, with different ideas that they take on board, will end up with contradictory ideas that they take on board and weave into what they pass on. Or am I making no sense there? Um, basically, if a person is told that you're going to see Jesus, and that is a thing that's in some spiritualist churches and in some of their closed circles. A circle is a meditation group, a circle of chairs normally, um, and a closed circle is, uh, well, an open circle is where you can go in. Uh, anyone can go in, sometimes there's a waiting list because of having too many people apply. Um, depends on the church and the relative popularity of the individuals involved. And the closed circle is by invitation only. Uh, typically. So open is where people can go or can apply to go uh, without necessarily being known to the church and those people who are more known by the church, the members of the church who are invited along, uh, tend to be in a closed circle. So typically the open circle is about awareness, awareness. Oh I, I saw a colour while we were meditating and it's like that was my mother's favourite colour. Oh, it must have been your mother and it was over your head. Well it's a funny thing she used to like wearing that uh, colour hat and that's why it would have been over the top of a person's head and um, you, you have that kind of idea and uh, the closed circle is more to do with uh, supposedly uh, passing on real information doing more serious and deeper practices and those notions those ideas that they have those you might even call it ideological I suppose those aspects of spiritualist and spiritism and other relating ideologies that are expressed will obviously continue to influence how far they think you go. In physical mediumship, when you go into a trance, let's focus on trance. A person goes into a trance as a trance medium and a spirit supposedly uh, steps in. They, uh, you know, step back and they allow a spirit to step forward uh, with the uh, permittance of their spirit guides. It could be their spirit guide and this is the claim. Uh, but uh, silly little questions. Well, what silly little questions could you imagine? Um, will your voice change? In some spiritualist churches and in some spiritualist liter uh, literature, it's like, no, your voice won't change. It will still be you doing your voice. Whereas other people, they say, no, your voice will change because they can alter your voice box, you know, like through ectoplasm, I suppose. So the claims vary massively. And sometimes in some spiritualist churches, perhaps a public display of transmediumship and a person doing a voice for the person they're supposedly speaking as. And it could be an old woman who's talking in a deep voice, like some kind of uh, Churchillian character. And um, in other cases, people will simply talk as they do uh, with different mannerisms uh, and the like. Different mannerisms? Different mannerisms? Mannerisms. <laughs> different mannerisms. And um, yeah, basically, they will just be them without a silly voice. Sometimes they have a silly voice, sometimes they don't. Depends on the uh, philosophy they have, the people involved and what they express. But imagine that kind of difference, you know, beyond the silly little things. The silly little things are an indicator, but beyond that, what might they pass on? How should you take it? How seriously should you take it? Well, the only way of you really gauging it is about what you know. And if that's the first thing you see, and if that's considered to be normal to you because that is your philosophy, that's the group you go to and you accept, then you'll accept these ideas as being valid, as being true. But if you go to another group, obviously, you're going to end up with a whole different selection of ideas. 
you'd think that's true instead what they express and obviously if you mix and match and go to different groups because you're thinking well I want to know if there's any truth to it this is what I did along with a number of other people uh, back in the day a number of people I knew then obviously you're going to have a lot more questions than why haven't you got the silly voice <laughs> so it can be um, fairly you know complex in some ways looking at some of the ups and downs. Uh, some people claim that when you first meditate, and if you are in fact, you know, spiritual, uh, you, should, you should end up with a big eye on the ceiling looking down at you. And some people say, no, 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 no. And this is what I've mentioned before. You'll end up with, you will end up with Jesus. And Jesus will be there and he'll put his hand on your shoulder and he will guide you, you see, because Jesus is the strongest guide. So that's within the Christian spiritualist churches. And uh, yeah, the list goes on really. Of all these little things, uh, you, you'll see a monk, or a nun, or a relative. That's another thing. Some spiritualist churches and the mediums that accompany uh, those churches, and for that matter, community centre groups, and uh, spiritual centres, and whatever you know the case may be, or simply a medium doing uh, messages, or readings, whatever you want to call them, um, they might say, a relative of yours cannot be your spirit guide and someone will say well yes they are <laughs> and some places do say well um, y your relative will be your spirit guide and they'll go well no that can't be right because I've said that I've read that um, not being true in a book I've read it in a book and this is one of the things I've spoken to I've alluded to before um, where people tend to go by what they've read in books. It's not just the churches and the philosophy within those churches. It's also to do with, well, what's in their books. And in some of their books, uh, it is very, very different from their, uh, you know, well, from the claims you might meet in real life. And they're going to differ from one another considerably. And I've gone over that in regard to angels before, like the Doreen Virtue branch of, you know, angel books, uh, which she has now denounced because uh, she's become a, uh, you know, a hardcore Christian. Um, <clears throat> very different from the menagerie of different books out there on the same subject. And it's the same with mediums. That's why I bring it up. It's the same with mediums, how you should work, what does work, you know, um, how, what the chakras are, what they mean, their coloration can vary. Uh, you know, the uh, the way in which you can live healthily as a, as a spiritual being. What is good? What is right? What is God? Is there a God? Is there no God? Is it a life force? Is there a world to the universe? Is there reincarnation? Obviously, the spiritualists and the spiritists disagree. Spiritism, they accept that, um, <clears throat> that reincarnation exists. Well, they, they believe it. I don't know if you can really accept something, purely accept it, if you don't know it but they think they know it, I suppose, and they believe in reincarnation. The spiritualists um, don't strictly, as a, as a doctrinal aspect, accept it. They go, well, it, it, it might be true, you know, but then again, they've got their own idea that you don't need to reincarnate because you have, what, you have um, <laughs> halls of learning, that's the term, halls of learning on the other side, which apparently look like Greek temples for some reason. And uh, yeah, that's where you're going to go. And there's going to be great libraries and these teachers and these philosophers, people who've gone, you know, uh, been on the road ahead of you, who shall uh, raise you and uh, help you to develop. So you see, there is no real need for reincarnation if you can learn it all on the other side uh, without having to go through the hardships of life then obviously uh, reincarnation is not necessarily uh, required. However, you, you may, you may, while over there, um, desire to come back and, you know, relive your life and all that. So, yeah, they do make a number of claims. And uh, some of it is contradictory. If it all made sense, or at least if there was a consistency to what is called mediumship, then you think it would all balance out and therefore you'd be able to balance out what is actually true because some of these issues might not necessarily directly relate to your spirit guides which i think was the subject of this video um but basically if they're saying well your spirit guide is now in this uh, place of learning and trying to bring you this knowledge and here's some scrolls and you go hang on i don't believe in the halls of learning there could be an issue there or you know if they happen to say about like a relative a relative is going to become your spirit guide because you've let loose uh, the, the point that, say, an uncle or something has died. 
And then you then they say that and you go, well, I don't want them as a spirit guide. They were horrible to us. You, you know, you end up with things of that kind, which can happen. But uh, there you are. Basically, like so much else within the spiritual movements, it is packed full of contradictions because it's pretty much all made up. In the end, that's the ultimate picture. It's made up.